Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Before I get started, I just want to ask, how many of you, is, are there folks here who already participate in Five for the Future? Can you show your hands? OK, so like a handful of people. And, and how many people know what Five for the Future is? More people, OK. Um, so as Raquel said, my name is Chris Lubker, uh, co-founder of Extendify. We are working to improve the WordPress experience to help hosts reduce their WordPress churn by helping users to be successful. And I live in Denver, Colorado, and enjoy biking, hiking, skiing, all the typical outdoor activities there. So I'm excited to talk to you all about Five for the Future and specifically you know, how, not only how you can participate, but how you can get business benefits from it as well. So uh, what we'll talk about today is what Five for the Future is. We'll talk about some of the benefits that you can get from, five, from participating, how to set a program up for success, and what some of the challenges are and how you can overcome those to, to create a successful program. Um, so what is Five for the Future? And this is, as a little bit of context, I think we all know that in order for WordPress to con continue to grow and be successful, it's taken a whole lot of people from around the world to contribute to that across lots of different teams. So this bubble chart just shows the 6.0 release, and it shows just development code contributions. But hundreds of people contribute to every release. Um, from lots of different companies, lots of different places around the world. And WordPress is supported by people both volunteering their own time and companies that sponsor people, so either some of their time or all of their time, uh, to contribute to the project across these 19 different teams. And so Five for the Future is an initiative that asks companies to contribute 5% of their resources back to the core project in order to support the longevity of WordPress. And there's a lot of, you know, the kind of main rationale behind that is to ensure that WordPress continues to be successful, continues to be uh, a, one, a great platform for people to use. And given that most of us, if not all of us, have our livelihoods or some portion of our business relying on WordPress, uh, we're all, we, have a, we all have a collective vested interest in that continued success. So Five for the Future is really, you know, there's kind of an altruistic element to it um, that supports the future of, of the platform. But what I would actually like to talk about today is not, <clears throat> is not about why it's important for the success of WordPress to participate, but what are the real benefits you can get for your business by participating in Five for the Future. Because we do it at Extendify, and we do it in order to support uh, support the program, but we also do it selfishly because we get real benefits from that. And so there are ways to set, set up your contribution in a way that allows you to really uh, maximize those benefits. So that's what I want to talk about. I'm not here to guilt people into, you know, contributing and kind of uh, that, in that, that sense. Uh, so in addition to obviously this warm and fuzzy feeling, you know, kind of being excited about um, contributing to a platform that powers 43% of the web. The, the benefits, there are three main benefits that we think about. One is insights. The first is insights. And this is, you know, by being close to the development, the growth of, the, of WordPress, you can learn a lot about the, uh, the platform today, where it's going in the future, and you can get real insights. It could, it could help you to identify new business opportunities. It could help you to better understand yeah, how things work, so you can be more efficient in your work if you're developing client sites, let's say, right? You can, you can better understand uh, some of the tooling that's available and new functionality, as an example, if you're involved there. And for us, with Extendify, what we're doing is we're building an experience on top of Gutenberg, the core editor of that project, and full site editing. And so we get you know, real tangible benefits from that. We are, you know, as an example, like one of the things we want to make sure we're not doing is recreating things that will also be coming out in core. So for us, we want to focus our energy on things that are actually differentiated and build on top of the core experience. Um, and so by being close to the development and discussions that are going on, it helps us to understand where core is heading. And so for us, it allows us to see you know, where we should be focusing our efforts. And you know, it also helps us to like to ultimately like deliver a better experience to our customers, to our users, people who are creating a site. Like there was an example just a couple of weeks ago where we were, 
you know, kind of our, our software will essentially create a website based on a series of inputs, and part of that is you know, navigation. And in the navigation, we were using the page list block. And we were realizing the page list block essentially lists every page in, the, in, in this block. And there's no uh, way as it exists today to easily choose which pages you want to edit, you want to include it. So for us, we were trying to figure out, it seemed like a fairly, fairly simple problem. We wanted to display five pages on the navigation, not all 10 pages. How do we do that? And we were starting to figure out, kind of coming together as a team, and different folks were proposing different ideas. There was an idea of just you know, using a regular list block and kind of work around um, that we were ident exploring there. But because our team, many, everyone on our team has, you know, kind of has been contributing, has uh, kind of had deeper understanding of WordPress and the different options that are available, we figured there's a very logical solution that's easier for that, just like kind of adding navigational elements. And we could do that automatically um, as we're creating these sites. So it, it's a very small example in that case, but instead of kind of hacking our way around and kind of coming up with our own solution, by being close to the product and the platform, we were able to see this opportunity. Um, you know, another example, I guess, for us, just to bring this to life a little bit more, is you know, we, at one point, this was about a year ago, we were trying to decide whether we needed to create our own styling options in order to deliver the type of output that we wanted to, to the customers that use our software. And you know, what we were trying to decide was, can we leverage our style components, the you know, uh, everything that was coming out with future iterations of full site editing? This was about a year ago. Um, or did we need to create our own? Like, how, wait, what, how quickly was, were things going to evolve? How important was it for us to have our kind of exact level of specificity to what we wanted um, versus leveraging, you know, what what what, what was going to be in core? And ultimately, we concluded that we didn't want to create our own styling elements. We wanted to um, lean as much as possible, whenever possible, into core style components that existed. And that's been, for us, like we needed that insight and that information in order to make an informed decision and feel good about the decision. And it's, it's actually been a core differentiating element of Extendify. So it's something we talk about with partners and uh, those that we work with, and so it's it's turned out to be a, a great decision, the right decision. We're very happy with that approach, and having been contributing and having people who are close, like allowed us to have the insight to make that make that decision. So insights is number one. You kind of learn things. I feel like you know, any 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 amount of contribution, where you'll kind of learn new things about where things are headed or how things work today. So insights is the first one. Number two is influence, and this may you know. I don't want to oversell it. You know, you're not going to you know, tomorrow become the the new benevolent dictator of WordPress or anything like that. You will. You know, this is something where influence can mean lots of different things at lots of different levels. But at the very simple level, it's. I feel like a lot of us have things that we wish, quote, you know, quote unquote, wish were different about WordPress. And instead of just wishing they were different, you can actually choose what you go work on and what your uh, company focuses their energy on. And you can fix those things that are either annoyances that are holding back the experience for you or your customers or making things inefficient in some way or another. Um, you have control over where your resources go. So it's not one of these things where you say, all right, we're here, we show up, what do we work on? Someone's going to tell you what to work on. You actually choose, you know, as a company, where you focus your energy. So you can focus your energy on the things that are going to have some impact for you and your business. And for us, like we, this isn't something that we solely were advocating for by any means. But for us, um, having style variations in an accessible way within the editor was really important. We didn't want to create lots of different themes uh, that people would choose from. We actually wanted a single theme and to allow people to have lots of different vari variety in choice with the styles. And so. As that was coming out, it's as simple as like plus wanting. Hey, we support this idea, and adding another voice to kind of nudge something forward to uh, actually working on it and helping to make it a reality and helping to make sure it comes out uh, as quickly as it can. You know, and you can influence that. And over time, I think as you as you show up, as you contribute, as you build relationships with people, you can actually have 
broader influence, right? I think, you know, it's amazing to me, you know, the WordPress powers so much of the web, but oftentimes decisions are made by just a handful of people who show who those 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 people that show up, you know, whether it's what something should be named or you know, the design of something or you know, what features should be prioritized. These are things where over time, as you build um, your own network and relationships with people and demonstrate that you're you know, kind of committed to the success of the platform, you can have a voice in those decisions as well. So I feel like a lot of times it's easy to sit back and watch what happens and then maybe critique later, or oh, I wish this was, back to this wish, I wish this would have happened differently. Just showing up actually can allow you to have that uh, that influence as well. So influence is the second, uh, second real benefit and it can mean that WordPress evolves in a way that supports you and your business. It means that you can fix things that uh, annoy you or make things less efficient for you and you can, you can impact where it's going. And then the third benefit is brand. And I'm not talking about um, you know, if you participate in Pipe the Future, your logo goes on the Five for the Future page along with the other companies that participate. Uh, you know, you're not going to get millions of new leads or customers from that page. That's, you know, that, that's a minor element of, the, of the, the benefit here, I think. What I mean by brand is by being active and out there in the community, you're able to, and having your employees and kind of your entire team out there and active in the community, it can help from a recruiting standpoint, like people see not only that your company values contribution and participates in that, they see how you work. You know, mo almost all the work in WordPress happens out in the open. You know, people can see, hey, this is a this is a sharp group of people. These are really nice. They're funny. I, I would I would like they can visualize themselves as part of that team um, being out there, and you start to kind of build relationships with others that are contributing and, and active and passionate about WordPress. You know, people who show up tend to be people who are both experienced and, and really excited about the future. So you can, you can find those people and build those relationships and build that brand that way. You can also find you know, value in dry, getting new customers or partnerships or things like that. I think there's a fair amount, for people who aren't very deep in WordPress, being able to talk about your and your team's contributions to the platform can really elevate your, your kind of status in, in other people's minds. So we. You know, for us, like our main partners that we work with are hosting companies, and many of them, there are a handful of them that come to WordCamps and are deeply involved, but many of them have never been to a WordCamp, don't know how any of this stuff works, and the idea that they can partner with a company like Extendify and they know that we are active contributors, they feel like they can get some of the benefits, whether it's insights or support and what they need by working with us. So it helps to elevate our stature and our standing in those ways. So brand is, uh, is the second one, is the third one here. And so those are the real benefits. And I, I think this, it, regardless of the type of, ben of company it is, if you're an agency doing client work, if you're a product company, if you're a hosting company, if you just have a WordPress site yourself that powers your business, all of these things can apply in, in different ways. And it's, it's it, you know, contributing even just a small amount, you know, uh, can help you to realize some of these benefits here. So what I want to talk about next is how to set the program up for success. So you have all these benefits, but it can be you want to make sure that you're contributing in a way that allows you to realize them and get, you know, kind of get, get the value that you're hoping to get. And this, uh, before we do that, we'll do a little bit of math, you know, because it's called five. I wonder if people can guess what this is, but let's see, 24 minutes a day is, is, is one option here, two hours per week, one day per month, or two and a half weeks per year. Does, does anyone know what that equals? Can people guess where I'm going with this? What percent of time it is? Five percent, yeah. So we have some math majors, great. Um, so five percent, and the, my point in this is that um, there are a lot of different ways you can actually get to five percent, and there's no like one perfect solution. There's no one answer that, that works for every company in every situation. So for us at Extendify, we do one day per month today. 
So the third Friday of every month is our contributor day. It's on the calendar. That's when we do it. The whole team participates in that way. Uh, we're, we're, we take the approach where we have everyone participate um, in Five for the Future. If you're larger, it can be easier, for, easier to sponsor a person or half of a time of someone or multiple people. Um, but as, we, as we're talking about here, it's you know, something about small businesses, those that maybe not, don't have the resources to hire a person just dedicated to core can get a ton of value just by having your team. Whether it's one day a month or a couple hours a week, you have to figure out what works for your team and your schedule and also what your, um, what your priorities are and what you're trying to accomplish. And I think the trade-off here is, you know, shorter periods of time, more frequent, allows you to be there and be uh, pushing things along in a, on a, in, a consistent ba in a consistent way. You know, the downside is you just have a little bit of time, so you tend not to be able to dive deeper into things. You know, if we have, you know, for us, we work in two-week development cycles for Extendify, and if we had two weeks or two and a half weeks to dedicate just to core, and we kind of took that just one time, we could get a lot done. You know, I, I, um, but you then don't see anything forward, and kind of you, you have this, these long periods of time where you're not actually um, involved in getting some of these benefits. So. I think that we've, I've talked to companies that do it a variety of different ways. I don't think there's one magical answer. And um, even for us, I think it's going to evolve. Like one thing we're finding with one day, one day a month is that um, sometimes it would be nice to be able to follow up with things, you know, maybe submit in the case of uh, contributing to development, you submit a PR, there are some questions. You're, it's not practical to wait 30 more days before you answer those questions and keep those discussions coming. So naturally, we're already kind of involved a little bit more. So we may try and ch kind of try shifting to more of a hybrid approach. But depending on what you're doing, there are different ways to get there. And so some of the keys, one is planning, advanced planning, I wrote here. I think it's really hard if you just say, everyone should find some time every week or every month to contribute. If it's not planned out, if people aren't, if it's not scheduled, it can be really hard to prioritize that. There are always things that come up. And it can also make that time not very effective. So um, what we'll do is before that day, before that third Friday, we will start creating a list of issues, start talking about some of the things that we want our team to accomplish. And everyone can, everyone joins in that collaboration. We try to figure out what people are interested in, what they know is going on that they think would be impactful in one way or another to the project or help us as a company. And um, by doing that, it also helps make sure that if there are questions we need answered ahead of time, we can be effective with our time. Because I think if you just show up and you say, okay, great, I'm joining them, you know, I kind of looked at the, what the marketing team's doing, here's a task that needs to get done, I'm gonna do that task, but I have a question about it. So you answer, ask the question at 9 a.m., maybe you don't get a response until 4 p.m., right? And you kind of lost your time and you're not able to do that. So a little bit of planning can really help to make the time that you do spend contributing, whether it's asking that question ahead of time or just aligning the team on where you're going to focus, that can really make it effective. Um, it can also make sure it actually gets done if you schedule it out. So planning is, is one of the first keys that we think about and we do all the time at Extendify. The second is hopefully it's fun. Hopefully this is something that you and your team are excited to participate in. I think we, we find a lot of people, uh, one of the reasons they join Extendify is because they're excited to not only work on the product that we're building, but also to have time to contribute to WordPress as well. Um, but they want to, you know, it, it's so much better if you can do it collaboratively, right? If everyone just goes off and does their own thing and never speaks to anyone for a day, it can be, you know, it can be kind of a lonelier day, you know, if they're used to collaborating with people. So whether it's teaming up on certain things. I know we've done this a couple of times and many companies will do, if they do an all company contribution, they'll have a kickoff, you know, kind of get the team together either in person or over a video call or something like that at the beginning. Um, have another kind of social time at the end to wrap up or something like that. But I think there are things that you can make it social and make it collaborative. So it's not only a time for people to learn and work with others across the community, but also to, you know, for your team to have some bonding and some time to, to, to work together and you know, be, make, have an impact together. And then the last thing is to, we, we think about um, as part of our program is to build in accountability. So this is, you know, it, it can be as simple as sharing, and this goes to the social element as well, but sharing at the end of 
whatever t what time period it is that you're doing, uh, what people worked on and what's impactful. And we celebrate, you know, if a PR gets merged in, even if it's three days later, we're kind of sharing that and high-fiving virtual, in our case, virtual high-fiving and cheering people on and, um, you know, kind of seeing the impact that you can have and celebrating those wins and sharing with it and sharing the challenges that exist too so that you can help people to uh, be more effective as time goes on. Like that can be a really effective way to make sure that the program feels both impactful and is delivering on some of these goals uh, and objectives. So those are the, as we think about the keys to success, but it's, it's not, it, we, you know, we've been participating for a while and uh, we still have things to learn. There are still challenges that we see in our participation. We're still iterating, as I mentioned, they're kind of going from the one day a month to trying to figure out is there some hybrid approach where we can uh, have our time be more consistent over, t uh, over any given period. Um, and there are real challenges, so it's not easy to get started. And for us, you know, and from what we hear from, from others who participate, one of them is, the way it's described here is the short-term needs get in the way, right? I think as a small business, as someone running a small business, you know, you are juggling lots of different hats, juggling different balls, wearing different hats. You can juggle your hats too, I guess. Um, but, you know, things come up. You need to be adaptable. It's, it's the, it's, it comes with, the, comes with the job, right? Like whether it's some client issue comes up, there's some bug that needs to be fixed, or a big opportunity that just needs all hands on deck and everyone to focus on it, you know, there are gonna be things that come up. And I think you need to be okay. The only way this program within your company succeeds long term is you need to be okay with some level of flexibility, right? I'm not gonna say schedule it for a certain period of time, never break that schedule or else you're not gonna be effective. And so like we, we will certainly have times at Extendify where I mentioned we do the third Friday of every month. Uh, some days it's the fourth Friday. Some days it's the first Monday of the next month. You know, it, it kind of gets pushed back and that's okay. You know, we have things come up just as all of you will have things come up in your business that requires you to be adaptable. And if you have a relatively small team and you know, this is a meaningful contribution for you, then you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely to be expected and you should be okay with it and, and recognize that it's gonna happen, um, that you'll be, able, you'll, you'll be moving things around. So that's, kind of, that, that's the first challenge that we see uh, and we've tried to adapt in how we structure the program. The second is not knowing how to get started. And I think this is, how many of you have ever been to a contributor day or contributed already? I know people participate in Five of the Future, so. so maybe half, almost half of the people here have, which means a lot of people haven't. And it can be very intimidating, overwhelming, you know, there are, like I said, there are 19 different teams and it can be, each one of them has, you know, some way that they onboard new members and have uh, getting started guides and things like that, but it can be overwhelming. And sometimes, especially at the beginning, it can be hard to figure out where to find your impact. You know, is it on the marketing team or is it doing testing or is it contributing to development? Is it writing documentation? You may try one thing or some people on your team may try one, one element, uh, one aspect of it, realize that either it's, they don't have the skills for it or the interest for it, or they want to do something else and they'll try something else. And so I think the, way, the best way I could describe this is it's going to be uh, slow at the beginning. It's probably going to feel like not as not as impactful as you'd like, um, but you're laying the foundation for the future and ensuring that it's gonna be more effective going, going forward. I don't know if y'all watched Schitt's Creek, the TV show, do you know Schitt's Creek? Uh, it's, uh, the first time I watched Schitt's Creek, I, I, I hated it. I thought it was a terrible show. The characters are very unlikable. I thought it, they were all very annoying. I was like, I, but my wife wanted to keep watching it. So we watched the second one. I still didn't like it. By the third one, I was hooked and I think I'm, I've watched the whole thing twice now. I think I'm on my third time going through the entire series of six seasons. Um, and I think about that as like, you know, in that case, it took me a little bit of time to understand, you know, kind of appreciate the humor, start to build uh, love for the characters in the show. And I think that's, that's, how, that's how it'll go with, with participating as well. Like your team, the first time it happens, the debrief at the end may be, uh, I didn't get anything done. I read a bunch of stuff, I tried to do this, this didn't work, I couldn't figure that out, or I didn't know, I, you know, I, I spent all day setting up my environment, so 
Okay, I've done that, but I didn't actually accomplish anything. And that's okay. You have to think the first few times that is that is the point of uh, of having these having these first first few uh, days or hours or whatever it is, whatever your time period is. And you can also so ways to overcome this is you know like I said, don't worry about the slow start. But you can also partner with others. So that's where this little bit of advanced planning comes in. I know some companies will uh, invite others to join them. So have you know. You know, one of the sponsored full-time contributors from the design team may be joining for an hour and helping the design team at XYZ Company you know, uh, get an overview of what opportunities exist or things like that. So reaching out to people can be really effective or even partnering with others. So um, if there's another company that you know, like bringing that company together could you know, kind of increase the benefits as well. So I, I think it can be, it can be both in overwhelming, intimidating, the slow start is to be expected, but eventually you'll get to this point um, by the third episode where you love it and you kind of feel good and it feels like um, you're actually having an impact and getting a lot of these benefits as well. So I, I, ho I hope this was helpful. I think next release, you know, your company could be listed here if it's not already. There are large companies, but there are a whole lot of small companies that as well that contribute to WordPress. This is the development. Uh, contributions from WordPress 6.0 and I hope you can not only have an impact on the future of WordPress but also reap real benefits for your business and and help you long term as well so happy to take any questions or um, if anyone has their own experience in, in kind of participating and anything to add I, I think that that'd be awesome to hear as well but anything questions Hi, Chris. Chris Osborne from Codable. Uh, so in terms of the actual mechanics of engaging with one of the teams and actually making proposals, is there, is there a formal way in which you do that? Or is it just about engaging with a member of the team and then just talking to them about what it is that you're interested in potentially uh, contributing? Or how does that how does that all work generally? Yeah, it's a good question. And the, the the answer is there are 19 different teams, and it varies a little bit based on the team. So, one of the best ways to do that, if you have the opportunity to join a WordCamp and go to a con con contributor day, you know this one, as Raquel mentioned, is Sunday. So if folks are around, that's a good opportunity to get connected with the team and understand what their priorities are, how you can how you can contribute in that way as well. Um, but it, it's going to vary a little bit by team. There, each team does have, if you go to make.wordpress, you will have, you know, for the different teams, in somewhere in their documentation, how to, how to participate, how to get involved in that team. And I wouldn't think about it as, you know, it's probably not showing up on day one and saying, all right, I'm gonna, here's what we want to do. These are our new priorities. Let's get them done. I think there's, this is where there's this kind of slow start comes in. There's real value in learning and you know, reading about what the team has been working on, joining. Uh, many teams have a, a, a periodic asynchronous kind of Slack meeting that happens where they discuss initiatives that are being worked on, what needs to get done. People can raise their hand and offer to help with things. Uh, so those are good ways to do it as well. Um, so really trying to understand like what the what the team what the priorities are right now for that team, how you can get involved. But people are also super nice too. So especially if you're coming to them saying I would like to help, people are willing to help you figure that out. And so even if you don't have any of these options or you're stuck somewhere, just reaching out to someone who has been participating in that team in some way or another can be helpful. There, it's a good way to do it. Yeah. Any question? Yeah, their experiences too. If others have participated. Uh, what do you think about the argument that's kind of playing out in the public space uh, about Five for the Future having to be um, dedicated to WordPress core, especially if you're at a company that um, you know you, you want everybody to participate. You might have like. Um, project managers or marketing folks that aren't necessarily technical? Well, I think 
some people definitely make the art, you know, kind of describe, we do other things to help, Word, help, help WordPress grow, which is great. You can do other things, you can, you can have an impact on the community in a variety of different ways, right? There are different ways that all of us come together and, uh, and make, make, moving, make moving the platform forward. I do think Fire for the Future, the way Josepha and team have uh, I described it and defined it on contributing towards these 19 different teams and what their goals are, it is important for the success of the platform, right? If people don't show up and help support these initiatives, they don't get done. They like, Literally, there's no one else to do them. So uh, I, I think both are important. I think having people who, you know, if, if you think you know, having a podcast and talking about WordPress is a way you want to contribute, fine. You know, I think that people can choose different ways to, to, uh, to have an impact, but there is real value in contributing to core, and there's real benefits I think that you can get as well. And I think to your question about um, non-technical teams, I think there's a perception, a pretty common one, where you know people feel like I don't have the skills to contribute. I don't have. I, I'm not a developer. I can't be on this the bubble chart that we were looking. Um, and that may be true, but there are a lot of different ways where people with any variety of different skills can have an impact. So. That could be, you know, kind of off the top of my head, I mentioned like testing, um, which is something nearly everyone can participate in. And in fact, having people with different levels of technical expertise can be even more important with testing, right? Understanding how people who are newer to the platform, maybe not as technical, uh, see things and what challenges they see, all the way up to people who have more advanced needs and tend to, you know, uh, be more familiar. There's marketing, there's writing documentation, which could be technical documentation, it could be more, uh, it could be less technical as well. So there, I think if you, I, I, I'd be hard to imagine someone who would look at the 19 different teams and all the different things they're working on where they can't find something that is both interesting to them and something they feel like they can have an impact on. And in fact, ideally, you know, we have our team, a lot of our contribution goes to development or design, but spreading out and finding and learning and kind of having, broadening the impact and can also increase your learnings. You can better understand what's going across, across the whole community that's, that's working towards it. So there can be, you know, benefits you get from ex expanding how people are contributing as well. Does that make sense? Or are you gonna ask, is there another question you had? Yeah, that makes sense. And actually, we participate, and I think a lot of our um, non-technical people have found um, uh, doing captioning for WordPress TV, which is one of the teams, That's to cool. be yeah. like a, a valuable thing to contribute their time to. So, thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Translations is another one. If your team is global and have different uh, languages that people speak, that's something a lot of people can do as well. So, yeah, it's a good example. Hello, I'm Allie from AJ Parka. Um, so just wanted to share my experience. Yeah. Um, so this is my first WordCamp, first WordPress event that I'm attending. Welcome, it's awesome. Uh, thank you. And um, so my in into uh, being a contributor really was the sign up form for the WordCamp and having to pick what I was like, going to do on Contributor oh, yeah. Day. Yeah. Um, and as a non-tech person, I was like, well, in, in my head, I, you know, I was familiar with Five for the Future. Um, but I always thought that that was really, you know, core working on the oh. releases and, and that there wasn't a place yeah, for non-tech yeah. people. Um, so it was really eye-opening when I learned about all the different teams and went to, um, I uh, chose to volunteer with the community team because that's my jam. Nice. Yeah. Um, and so it was great because I started um, volunteering, um, you know, a, a few hours a week. Um, in the two or three months leading up to this. And it was just a great in to feel like already, you know, was participating and helping yeah. and new people before I even showed up. So yeah. that was, that's, you know, that there was other, other, <clears throat> other benefits as well, just in terms of, you know, getting a little bit oriented before yeah, you know, so. that's cool, right? You make friends, right? You kind of, you know, <laughs> online friends that become in-person friends when you see them in, that's in right. life. Yeah, yeah. It, can, it can make you feel connected to the community. Yeah, yeah and be involved. That's cool. That's great. Hey. 
Hi, I'm Courtney Robertson. I am the training team co-rep and I'm a dev advocate at GoDaddy Pro. Um, as part of the training team, we help make the content that goes out on learn.wordpress.org. So uh, it is a resource that, especially as I think about the small business owner perspective maybe in this talk, um, it's a resource you can use with your clients. And so by showing up and participating with the training team, you're having input into what resources you need to help train your clients. Along with that, we host events, uh, teaching people the basics of how to use WordPress. They're essentially an online meetup, and I would highly encourage people to check those out as well. If you go to learn.wordpress.org slash events, I believe in the address bar, um, we'll get you there. And then, um, or it would be listed as online workshops would be another term that you might see. Um, the other thing to take note of is that Every few weeks or so, it seems that the test team, there's 21 teams, and the test team in particular has these calls for testing. And it's basically a new user experience testing session that you don't need to have a lot of skills in that. In fact, sometimes it's better that you don't. Um, when, right. when you're too familiar, it's hard to remember that creating certain parts of WordPress can feel a little challenging. So. Those are opportunities to invite your coworkers in. That's something that I've done internally is get people involved in those new user type of testings. They, they list them as FSE call for testing. So if you see any of those being published, make.wordpress.org slash test. Look for posts that say FSE call for testing. And that's a good chance to get in and see what's happening and tests that you can go through. There's a whole series of them. Some that have happened in the past, even though those calls are done, Go through it anyway if you're still working on helping staff get up to speed learning what's happening in WordPress. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've done I've done those personally. A lot of our team have done those uh, calls for testing, and you learn a lot because oftentimes it's testing kind of the latest functionality that's out there. So often, you know, a lot of times it's oh cool, I didn't even know this was possible. You know, reading other people what other people are doing too. So yeah, and on the learn, I mean, imagine how cool it would be if you're talking to a client and you're sending them some documentation, and be like, oh, by the way, we help to write this documentation and here it is on learn.wordpress.com you know like wordpress.org sorry that like allows you know that's a kind of branding we were talking about and how to really continue to elevate yourself as a leader in the wordpress uh, community and help with that myself